All right, Cheezers, time for another HRL recap. So this is going to be uh, two weeks to go. Two weeks to go with this recap. So had to send on this one because uh, there's a lot to talk about, obviously, with two weeks left. Um, this previous week sets up a lot, and it's going to be interesting to see how the final two weeks of the season play out, especially because uh, the last week, yet again, keep trying to remind everyone, um, it is a combo deal. It's the regular season finale. Um, and the grand final as well, same time. So it's going to make things pretty interesting. Uh, but let's go through week six. So we started off with uh, C6 Speedway on week six. That was not intentional. I promise it was not intentional. Um, but we started off with that. Pretty interesting race. Um, only Hog Train Oval uh, in the season. And the winner of this one, Slaunch, was like the only guy that I feel like could fall back and just make his way through the pack. I feel like he did it like two or three times. Ended up paying off in the end. Um, took a while to get to the front. And, well, you'd, you'd get close, but take a while to like literally get to the lead. And then once he got the lead, didn't really um, give it up from there. Got the win in this one. Uh, Blake taking second. And Roman third. Ended up getting fourth. Can be fifth for this one. And then we go to Skyway. And Skyway had a big crash in the beginning. Um, and that was a pretty important part of this race. But yeah, the, it was just there was double three wides already. Uh, in a pretty tricky section right away at the start. And it's just recipe for disaster. His big crash early on. That shook things up quite a bit. Um, and Sol ended up getting a really big lead. Um, Roman and I got away pretty well too. Um, and eventually we were able to catch up to Sol, get by him. I ended up taking the win for this one. Roman uh, would take second, Slaunch third, Detail fourth. Um, and Sol still getting a top five out of this one. Then we go to Louisville. Louisville is a pretty good race. Um, this AX is actually a really good battle. It was like a four-way battle at different points in, in time um, for the lead and for second place. A little bit of back and forth there. A few lead swaps uh, throughout the race. Um, but at some point in the middle portion of the race, Roman took the lead. And once he got the lead, there was a few times uh, where a few of us got pretty close but never really took it back. So he ended up holding on to that win. Uh, yeah, taking the dub. Louisville, uh, detail, big comeback. Takes second, got really close at the end. I ended up taking third. Uh, Slaunch fourth, and Hunter getting the top five um, on this one. So the overall, there everything's said and done. Roman got the overall for this one. So this is big overall for him. First one for him on the season. 46 points. Slaunch and I both had 44. Second and third. Uh, detail fourth with 39. Blake fifth with 35. Canby six 34. Hunter 730. Vulcan eighth 27. Soul ninth 25. Armada 10th 22. And Coop 11th with 20. Um, so yeah, now we go into a lot. <laughs> now we go into a lot. There's a lot to talk about in the points. You know what? I'm actually going to skip over this first. We're going to go into um, the series-specific points and take a look at these quick. So the GK, um, with the recent two wins, I kind of put my name back in the in the title fight for this one. Um, so now it's potentially a battle uh, between Detail and I. I would say depending on how the next race goes. Like, I don't necessarily have to win, but I'd probably have to uh, finish better than him at the next one at least to have a chance going into the last one. Um, I'd say if Detail bounces back and, and takes, a, takes a dub there, then he's, you know, four dubs to two. Like, he's probably looking pretty good. Um, but it's actually, like, close now, and there's actually a conversation there now. I would still say he has um, the advantage in this one with three wins to two, but um, it's at least somewhat close now. So we potentially have a title fight for the for the go-kart standings. And then we go to Terrain Oval. Terrain Oval, on the other hand, I think I have a pretty big advantage in this one, but not to say that it's locked uh, locked in by any means. Um, so, basically, uh, Slaunch, you know, does have the two wins, but he also had three really bad finishes to start off with, so that's, you know, the downside there. Um, and then Detail, three really good podium finishes, but again, the two bad finishes. I'm the only one that doesn't really have, like, a bad finish yet, um, but with the one win, three podiums in there as well. So right now I'm leading the standings over Slaunch. Uh, Slaunch making big gains with those last two wins. It's a seven-point lead, which is pretty big, but there are two races left. So um, I have a decent advantage going into this one, but potentially if things go wrong for me and go really well for like Slaunch or Detail probably um, at Peralis, then that things could get interesting there. So it kind of depends. Definitely have the advantage, and if I have a good finish at Peralis, probably looking pretty good. Um, but if not, if one of them has another good race... Could get spicy. It's kind of how Train Oval looks right now. And then we go to Arena Cross. Arena Cross, I'd say, Detail has a very big advantage in this one. 
Um, you know, five point advantage over me, six point advantage over Roman, um, everybody else too far back. So it's not out of the question. It's possible that Roman or I could snake it um, at Hagen Das, but that's going to be, it's going to take a really unfortunate race out of detail. And then one of us would have to uh, have to win it. So like, for example, off the top of my head, five point advantage, um, you know, to get a tie, uh, like for example, me, I'd have to, I'd have to win. Um, if detail finished uh, fifth, that'd give him 12 points. So yeah, that'd be a tie. So he'd have to finish what, like sixth? He'd have to finish sixth, I believe, off the top of my head, um, for me to get ahead because he would have the tiebreaker uh, in any scenario, I believe. So yeah, like it's unlikely. Um, there's technically a chance that Roman and I, uh, Roman or I, could snake this one. But if you look at the results, I mean, his worst details, worst result in a, at an AX this season is um, third. So like it's it's pretty uh, unlikely, I would say. If you had a bad finish, wouldn't it like shift around the mulligans too? Yeah, I don't, I don't know how that'd work out. Um, but uh, but yeah, so um, I would say detail very favored to get AX. Technically not completely locked in, but very big favorite. Um, Roman or I could potentially take it, um, but that's how that one's looking. And then we go to Hog TRS. Um, Hog TRS is like the same deal with uh, detail in Arena Cross, but now with uh, with Roman in this one um so yeah like again gk is definitely the closest terrain oval i definitely have a pretty significant advantage ax detail has a pretty significant advantage hog trs roman has a pretty significant uh significant advantage that being said it is a similar type of deal uh detail and i aren't that far back so if roman has a really rough race in the next one and one of us wins and then like setting up for the last race there's a potential that it could get kind of interesting um, but if Roman, I would say, like, has, like, a podium, probably, um, then he's he's probably looking pretty good, you know, if he wins for sure, but um, if he wins again. But if he at least, like, has a podium again, yeah, I think he'd be looking pretty good. Um, and he already is looking pretty solid for, uh, for this one. So that's the look at the uh, track category um, titles. Again, Roman very favored for this one. Detail very favored for this one. I'm very favored for this one. And then uh, GK is the one that's, like, pretty close right now again with the way mulligans would work i would think detail would have a, a decent advantage here um but it's you know this is easily the closest one in these categories that we have uh at the moment for sure so all right now let's go to the point standings so um the point standings there's some interesting stuff to go over here so first of all the points lead battle uh mulligans are starting to come into play and with that detail has a four point lead um over me so Pretty close still, pretty close. Um, four points is definitely pretty substantial, but it's not like too much to overcome by any means. So still a good battle there. And then Roman is still in the conversation. He's only 16 points um, off the points lead. So Roman's not too far out. He'd have to have a really good, um, I would say, week this week to, to really set himself up for the last week to have a chance at, at taking it in the end. Um, but it is possible. He's he's definitely... I think everybody else is out of the conversation. Roman is right on the edge, but he's definitely still in the conversation. He's had a good enough season where I think he's earned that right to uh, to be in the talks. I like the little zoom. There you go. Um, but yeah, like to be in the talks. Like, I think he's definitely... I think he's definitely there. Um, so yeah, so, so Roman... I, I would say the Dark Horse for sure, but definitely a right to be in that uh championship conversation so that's that's interesting it's good that we actually have um a third man in i feel like it's been a while since we've had like a three-way uh championship battle that's kind of maintained my my mind goes to um the uh firestone fire hog slash hawk because we were doing both um at the end of 2022 that that sunday series um was slaunch detail and i and it was like really close it ended up it ended really close too, where the three of us were all like really tight the whole season. I feel like that was the last one that the whole way through ended up being a three-way battle. And there's been a couple seasons since then where it was like kind of close, but at the end, it, you know, the third person wasn't really there, um, wasn't really close enough. And I feel like this is one where, again, if Roman has a really good week this week, he could actually make it happen and be in that in that conversation. So, um, yeah, hopefully it happens. Hopefully it ends up being that close. So we have a good three-way battle again. Um, and then we go to fourth place, Slaunch. Obviously, Slaunch 
in a close battle with Soul all season, um, but he had a really good week this week. Soul did not have a really good week this week. Um, the Mulligan's helping out Soul a little bit, but still Slaunch gaining an advantage, a seven point advantage to be exact. Um, so uh, a big one for Slaunch, a big one for Slaunch here. Try to take this fourth place spot in points um, and gear up for the grand final because he probably knows at this point, like he's not really going to be competing for the regular season championship. He's had too many bad rounds. So just try to pick up some momentum, which he did a good job of this week. Try to pick up some momentum, try to have some good finishes and give yourself a shot of, you know, getting that fourth in points, try to lock that up and, uh, you know, give yourself a shot of the grand final. I think that's kind of what he's looking for. I think Soul's kind of in the same boat. Um, but yeah, Soul obviously rough week this last week, but hey, a seven point gap after a week that went that poorly. I think he's got to be pretty happy with that. Um, he probably thought, I would imagine he would have thought it would have went way down, but no, he's only seven points. So, uh, still very doable. He could still, um, take that fourth place spot in points again. I think both of them are a little too far behind from Roman. I think Roman's having too good of a season. I think third's a little bit out of reach at this point, most likely. Um, but there's still very much, there's still very much so a battle for fourth and fifth for sure. Um, and then sixth place Camby, as long as Camby shows up, I think Camby should be pretty solidly in sixth. I, again... Fourth, fifth, probably a little too far ahead. Camby's in this weird no man's land area where Camby's well ahead of Hunter, but well behind Slaunch and Soul. So I don't think Camby will be able to move up at all. But again, as long as Camby shows up, Camby should be able to hold on to that sixth place and get that qualification spot. Where Camby was kind of like close into that conversation, but not quite there in Mega Mix. But Camby's had a pretty good season and can very much so get that top six, get that qualification into the grand final. Um, again, I think Camby just needs to show up, basically. Just show up to this next week. And Cammy's made every week so far, made every moto so far. Um, so just show up and you should be good. So um, Hunter is in the brutal hot seat yet again. I, I think this Hunter was in like a similar spot in Mega Mix. And I think Hunter's in like the same spot here this season um, where he's just in the hot seat. Now, points wise, right, pure points wise, he's good. That's the that's the good thing that Hunter has to rest on here. Purely points wise, you are good, Hunter. Like, you don't have to worry about anybody behind you passing you on points. That's not going to happen. On the downside, you don't really have enough points to get by Camby, I'd say. So that kind of sucks. But on the again, on the bright side, in that wild card position, I don't think anybody's going to pass you on, on pure points. So any tiebreaker scenario, Hunter will win that tiebreaker. He's got his points position well locked up. Like, he, any tiebreaker, he's going to be good. Any tiebreaker, he's going to be good. The problem is if there isn't a tie, right? So let's take a look at the wild card points. Um, let, let's look away from Hunter for a moment. Blake is totally fine. Blake is down there in points, but in terms of wild card points, Blake has four. Blake has more wild card points than Camby does. Not that that matters, but just like as an example, right? Like Blake is super good on wild card points. Four to uh, Hunter has one, Armada has one, Vulcan and Coop haven't even scored one yet. So in terms of wild card points, again, Blake, absolutely good. Nothing to worry about there. I, I would, you know, I'm not going to call it yet, but Blake's like basically locked in in that seventh spot um, for the grand final, I'd say. Like that's just, it's too high of a hill to climb. It'd be too crazy of a shakeup for, you know, multiple drivers to earn that many wild card points. Like it's just not going to happen realistically. Um so yeah, I would say like Blake for sure is in the Blake is in like the real deal spot last season. I would I would compare those two. Blake is in the real deal spot where hasn't showed up to as many races, but in the races that he showed up to, he's had a few pretty good performances. Had one really good night in particular, and that one really good night um, has propelled him to a super secure spot in the grand final. So Blake's good, basically. That's what I'm getting at. Blake's good. Hunter, on the other hand, has. Well, a few people to worry about. So obviously Vulcan or Coop, if Vulcan or Coop have a really good night and earn two wild card points, like get a win on the terrain oval, that'd be the best way to do it, I'd say. Get a win on the terrain oval. Vulcan or Coop could still get in. Um, again, if Hunter doesn't earn a wild card point himself, you know, doesn't make it a tie, um, they could get in. Um, the easier road is for Armada. Now Armada is way down there in points, but Armada potentially wouldn't have to worry as much about the tiebreaker. Armada has one wild card point um, right there with Hunter. They both have one wild card point. So um, if Armada, if if Hunter doesn't score a wild card point, Armada 
only needs to get one, right? Vulcan or Coop would need to get two. Armada only needs to get one, assuming Hunter doesn't get any. So it doesn't even need to be a win. Like if Armada could get a podium on one race and there is a terrain oval race and Armada did get that wildcard point in a terrain oval race in the beginning of the season. Um, that being said, Hunter got one in that same race too. Um, but still, like there's a real, very real possibility that one good race um, Armada could just steal his way in there. Um, so if you're Hunter, it's a spooky spot to be in. It's a spooky spot to be in. Because again, any tiebreaker scenario, you're good. Um, but especially in the terrain oval, I'd say you really have to look out for a good performance from Armada. Because if he has it, and he's done it before, his best races recently have been on those tracks. Um, he could get that wild card point. He already has one to his name. And he can make his way in a crazy scenario into the grand finals. So... Um, yeah, it's definitely something to look out for, uh, and it's definitely a very real possibility. So, um, yeah, interesting stuff. But I think that about sums up the points, positions, and discussions there. Um, I suppose Blake, Coop, and Vulcan are kind of close in their own points positions, so they're kind of close with each other. But yeah, a lot of the other people um, are kind of settled. Slaunch and Soul kind of have a battle. Obviously, there's the lead battle, and Roman's trying to work his way into that. Um, but that about sums it up, and that about sums up, like, the wild card point scenario and all the different, like, track points and all that. I think I covered everything. Um, so let's go to the schedule, and let's take a look at, uh, what's left. Okay, so, got the schedule pulled up here. And, uh, and yeah, obviously, two more weeks, um, remaining. And you can see here, that's what I was talking about. That was that night, Armada and Hunter with that, but that's where they got both their wild card points. Crazily enough, they both got them on that first race of the of the season. Um, but here we are, crunch time. This is the cutoff week. And uh, yeah, looking for a clutch performance from one of them again. Um, but uh, but let's take a look at the track. So Hecatomb, TRS, I've tested this one out. I think this one's pretty fun. It has one true collision, and then there's also another like weird kind of like half collision where it's not like a straightforward collision that we're used to. Um, but you can kind of like swing wide and you can kind of make contact with the other drivers on the other side. So it's a hard one to explain. You'll know what I mean when we get to the race. Um, but it's a very, very tight, very tight, very short, very aggressive um, TRS with, again, basically two collisions um, by Roman. I think this one will be another good race. I think this will be another one of those like conky, like how Westerling was or how Crystal Grotto was. Um, again, Opixes were more... On the one collision side, and those were a little more calculated. Still had some really good battles on those. I really enjoyed Barf Hog um, personally, um, but if we're trying to like group the tracks together here, Westerling, Crystal Gato, those are definitely um, the more conky ones, and I think Hecatomb probably fits more into those um, than Barf Hog or Quadro Current. So expect this race to be kind of like those, I would think. And then you have Peralis, another Roman track. Um, Triangle, Triangle, Pocono-ish, Terrain Oval, on reach. Uh, very, very different corners on this one. Very curious to see how this one races. I don't really know what to make of this one, honestly. I have no clue how this one's going to race. Total wild card of the night for me. We'll have to see how it goes. And there's Crystal Lake GK, which is kind of the backup. I'm, I'm working on, I'm working on something here uh, for the for the go kart track. Um, uh, basically, if my new idea doesn't work out, then I'll, I'll fall back on Crystal Lake and finish it out. So stay tuned on that one. I'm going to literally go live and start working on it. Like after I finish recording this recap. Um, so yeah, we'll, uh, you know, keep an eye on the discord. I'll give updates for that. It won't, it won't be like C6 where it's very last minute. Again, I was going between those different options there myself. Um, should be a lot quicker. Should know which one I want to go with a lot quicker on, on, on this one. Um, but yeah. Interesting lineup of tracks uh, for the last week of the season. Uh, or sorry, for the cutoff week of the season. And uh, no AX. Um, yeah, be curious to see how it goes uh, for the cutoff night. And then, of course, after that, we've got the grand final. We've got the auto dome. That's ready to go. We've got Hagen Das, as far as I'm aware. That's pretty much ready to go. Maybe Slaunch do a few things, but as far as I'm aware, ready to go. Jade Park's been ready to go for a long time. Long time. And then Akai, Kiri, um... Two Opix tracks back to back to close out the season. Um, that's the Hog TRS. So, uh, yeah, should be interesting. Um, another Reach Train Oval. Uh, two Hog races. Two Hog races in the Grand Final, right? Like we we haven't had. 
it's mostly just been the hog TRS. Um, but in the grand final, we're getting two hog races. So that's kind of interesting. Um, but other than that, you know, uh, a reach train oval, pretty typical. A uh, Halo 4 go-kart, pretty typical for the way the season's gone. Um, and then, yeah, then you've got the hog track um, and the hog AX, which uh, Slaunch's hog AX is like kind of the wild card of the grand final, I'd say. It's, it's very different style to... A lot of the AXs that we've raced this season. I'm, I'm curious about it. I'm, I'm looking forward to racing that one. Um, but there you have it. There you have it. There's the recap just at the 20-minute mark. And I feel like I went through everything pretty well. And for how much there was to talk about, I feel like this actually wasn't too bad. Um, but we're going to close it out there. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, yeah, really looking forward to these last set of tracks again. Almost everything's set in stone. I'm just working on that last go-kart slot. Again, look for the updates on that uh, when they'll come. Hopefully sometime in the middle of the week. Uh, hopefully like around like Wednesday, hoping to have it done by then. Um, but yeah, almost everything set in stone. A uh, few interesting wild card battles, champ battles looking good, a few points positions, and then we'll have a grand final where everything resets, but people are going to be battling for their regular season spots at the same time. How is that going to affect things? How is that going to affect things? There could be some weird scenarios where you're in a spot where it's like you, you have to make a send to go for something for your regular season spot maybe, but if you go for that send, it could screw over the spot that you're in for the grand final, maybe. I don't know. There could be like some weird scenarios like that. So it'd be interesting to see how that plays out. Um, but yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the recap, been enjoying the season. Um, I'll see you this Friday uh, for the cutoff week, very big week um, in the HRL short track showdown. See you there.